I don't know about you this morning, but I'm so grateful to be able to be here. I'm grateful to worship God with you and to learn some more names, and I'm thankful for the opportunity that we have to be together, and I hope that you also are thankful for that as well. I appreciate the selections that Levi made on those songs. And really, when I think about this lesson this morning, the, the continuation of Psalm 119, I think that all of those descriptions, or basically all, were used in this psalm. We talk about the holiness of God. We talk about his majesty. We talk about how that he is the Lord of our salvation. And on and on it goes. My goal from last week and also this week is that you will be drawn closer to God in your worship and closer to God in your everyday life. I don't know if you are aware of it. You've probably heard this many times. But Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the whole Bible. It has 176 verses. It is divided into 22 sections. This corresponds to the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. In the original Hebrew, this psalm is an acrostic. Each stanza has eight verses with two lines each. And the first letter of each verse in the first stanza begins with the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And the first letter of each verse in the second stanza begins with the second letter in the Hebrew alphabet, and on and on it goes. There was an old German version of the Bible that placed the following description at the head of Psalm 119. This is the Christian's ABC of the praise, love, power, and use of the Word of God. People are continually searching for a spiritual high, an emotional narcotic, to quiet the pain of their aching and often monotonous lives. But the psalmist declares that our spiritual highs will be commandments and precepts, statutes, ordinances, and as God's word translation says, regulations as well. I'll be showing the reading from Psalm 119 verse 81 through 112 you, on the screen and you can follow me there or you can look at your own version if you would like. Notice that I have put up eight verses at a time. So we'll be reading one stanza uh, of that, this chapter at one time. My soul is weak from waiting for you to save me. My hope is based on your word. My eyes have become strained from looking for your promise. I ask, when will you comfort me? Although I have become like a shriveled and dried out wineskin, I have not forgotten your laws. What is left of my life? When will you bring those who persecute me to justice? Arrogant people have dug pits to trap me in defiance of your teachings. All your commandments are reliable. Those people persecute me with lies. Help me, 
they almost wiped me off the face of the earth. But I did not abandon your guiding principles. Give me a new life through your mercy so that I may obey the written instructions which came from your mouth. O Lord, your word is established in heaven forever. Your faithfulness endures throughout every generation. You set the earth in place and it continues to stand. All things continue to stand today because of your regulations, since they are all your servants. If your teachings had not made me happy, then I would have died in my misery. I will never forget your guiding principles because you gave me a new life through them. I am yours. Save me because I have searched for your guiding principles. The wicked people have waited for me in order to destroy me, yet I want to understand your written instructions. I have seen a limit to everything else, but your commandments have no limit. Oh, how I love your teaching. They are in my thoughts all day long. Your commandments make me wiser than my enemies because your commandments are always with me. I have more insight than all my teachers because your written instructions are in my thoughts. I have more wisdom than those with many years of experience because I have obeyed your guiding principles. I have kept my feet from walking on any evil path in order to obey your word. I have not neglected your regulations because you have taught me how sweet the taste of your promise is. It tastes sweeter than honey. From your guiding principles I gain understanding. That is why I hate every path that leads to lying. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. I took an oath and I will keep it. I took an oath to follow your regulations, which are based on your righteousness. I have suffered so much. Give me a new life, O Lord, as you promised. Please accept the praise I gladly give you, O Lord, and teach me your regulations. I always take my life into my own hands, but I never forget your teachings. Wicked people have set a trap for me, but I have never wandered away from your guiding principles. Your written instruction are mine forever. They are the joy of my heart. I have decided to obey your laws. They, they offer a reward that never ends. You know, in reality, the, the Bible must be our standard equipment in life. When gold was discovered in California in January 1848, People made a mad rush for the West. The Postal Service devised a way to send mail overland. And the first overland mail arrived in Los Angeles in May 1848. And it was believed to have been mailed in January of that year. I don't know in in my looking that up if that was a joke or that was real. A private, uh, the Postal Service had some competition, at least for a short period of time. Uh, A private mail enterprise was inaugurated between St. Joseph, Missouri and Sacramento, California 
on April the 3rd, 1860. It was discontinued in October 1861. So it went on for a little more than a year and a half. And it was the Pony Express. The first mail delivered by Pony Express took 10 and a half days and a total of 75 ponies to travel about 1,900 miles. The fastest time was seven days and 17 hours when the inaugural address of President Abraham Lincoln was delivered in 1861. I note, the initial rate for that service was $5 for each one-half ounce. Remember, this is 1860s. But that was later reduced to $1, I'm sure, when they were about to go out of business. Everything had to be streamlined on both the horses and the riders to keep the load as light as possible. The saddles were smaller than usual. The mail pouches were flat. The riders were not permitted to carry guns. And the letters had to be written on, th on uh, thin paper. And yet there was one item that the Pony Express officially insisted that their carriers uh, uh, carry with them. And as you can see, well, it, as you can see when I get it up there, uh, it, was the pony, it was a full-sized Bible. Okay, I fell behind. I? Okay, there it is. Each writer received his Bible when he signed on with the Pony Express. And it was standard equipment. And to Christians, the Bible should always be our standard equipment. And it is so easy for us to have access to the Bible these days. We can have it on our phones, and we can have it on our tablets. We can have it on our computers. We can have all kinds of Bibles in our homes. But what good do they do if we do not study them? If we do not look into the Word of God and be drawn closer to Him because of that Word? And I hope this past week that maybe some of you have been drawn closer to God's Word. And I hope this coming week more of us will be drawn closer to God's Word. We will love His Word. And not just the, the Philadelphia or the Phileo love, but with agape love, unconditional love. We can't wait to look at and study the Word of God. That's what it was intended for. That's what God wants us to do, to draw closer to Him through His Word. It has been said that the Bible is the only book that meets the needs of man under all conditions of life. Now the remainder obviously is a rather lengthy reading, but we'll be going through verses 113 through 176. I hate two-faced people, but I love your teachings. You are my hiding place and my shield. My hope is based on your word. <coughs> Get away from me, you evildoers so that I can obey the commandments of my God. Help me, God, as you promised, so that I may live. Do not turn my hope into disappointment. Hold me, and I will be safe, and I will always respect your laws. 
You reject all who wander away from your laws because their lies mislead them. You get rid of all wicked people on earth as if they were rubbish. That is why I love your written instructions. My body shudders in fear of you, and I am afraid of your regulations. I have done what is fair and right. Do not leave me at the mercy of those who oppress me. Guarantee my well-being. Do not let arrogant people oppress me. <coughs> Excuse me. My eyes are strained from looking for you to save me and from looking for the fulfillment of your righteous promise. Treat me with kindness and teach me your laws. I am your servant. Help me understand so that I may come to know your written instructions. It is time for you to act, O Lord, even though people have abolished your teachings. I love your commandments more than gold, more than pure gold. I follow the straight paths of your guiding principles. I hate every pathway that leads to lying. Your written instructions are miraculous or wonderful. That is why I obey them. Your word is a doorway that lets in light and it helps gullible people understand. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Turn toward me and have pity on me as you have pledged to do for those who love your name. Make my steps secure through your promise and do not let any sin control me. Save me from human oppression so that I may obey your guiding principles. Smile on me and teach me your laws. Streams of tears flow from my eyes because others do not follow your teaching. You are righteous, O Lord, and your regulations are fair. You have issued your written instructions. They are fair and completely dependable. <coughs> My devotion for your words consumes me because my enemies have forgotten your words. Your promise has been thoroughly tested, and I love it. I am unimportant and despised, yet I never forget your guiding principles. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your teachings are reliable. Trouble and hardship have found me, but your commandments still make me happy. Your written instructions are always right. Help me understand them so that I will live. I have called out with all my heart. Answer me, O Lord, I want to obey your laws. I have called out, save me, so that I can obey your written instructions. I got up before dawn and I cried out for help. My hope is based on your word. My eyes are wide open throughout the nighttime hours to reflect on your word. In keeping with your mercy, hear my voice. O oh Lord, give me a new life guided by your regulations. Those who carry out plots against me are near, yet they are far away from your teachings. You are near, O oh Lord and all your commandments are reliable. Long ago, I learned from your written instructions that you made them to last forever. Look at my misery and rescue me, because I've never forgotten your teachings. Plead my case for me and save me. Give me a new life as you promised. Wicked people are far from being saved because they have not searched for your laws. Your acts of compassion are many in number, O Lord. Give me a new life guided by your regulations. I have many persecutors and opponents, yet I have not turned away from your written instructions. I have seen 
traitors, and I am filled with disgust. They have not accepted your promise. See how I have loved your guiding principles. O Lord, in keeping with your mercy, give me a new life. There is nothing but truth in your word, and all of your righteous regulations endure forever. Influential people have persecuted me for no reason, but it is only your words that fill my heart with terror. I find joy in your promise, like someone who finds a priceless treasure. I hate lying. I'm disgusted with it. I love your teachings. Seven times a day, I praise you for your righteous regulations. There is lasting peace for those who love your teachings. Nothing can make those people stumble. I have waited with hope for you to save me, O Lord. I have carried out your commandments. I have obeyed your written instructions. I have loved them very much. I have followed your guiding principles and your written instructions because my whole life is in front of you. Let my cry for help come into your presence, O Lord. Help me understand as you promised. Let my plea for mercy come into your presence. Rescue me as you promised. Let my lips pour out praise because you teach me your laws. Let my tongue sing about your promise because all your commandments are fair. Let your hand help me because I have chosen to follow your guiding principles. I have longed for you to save me, O Lord, and your teachings make me happy. Let my soul have new life so that it can praise you. Let your regulations help me. I have wandered away like a lost lamb. Search for me, because I have never forgotten your commandments. This is a strange time in our country and throughout the world, really. The virus has caused many of us to wear masks when we're out, to be careful about distancing ourselves from other people. And it's caused us to live a somewhat boring and lonely life sometimes. It seems to me that this is the perfect time for people to draw closer to God by reading and studying His Word. I challenge you, for two weeks, to spend time, an hour a day, studying God's Word. Oh, you may have to get up a little earlier, or you may have to stay up a little later, or you may even have to turn off TV for an hour. There's nothing much on there but reruns anyway. But just think, if we were to study the Word of God an hour a day, how much closer we would draw ourselves to God. He wants us to be close. He loves us. And and we need to show our love for him by reading and studying his word. I encourage you to do that. I know that there are many of you who have uh, cell phones. There are many of you who uh, may even have version downloaded on your cell phones or on your tablets. And you can read through the the Bible, read and meditate upon the Bible and have it read to you if you like that. Because there is a voice on there that will read that to you. And just think about the glory of God. And just think about His majesty and His holiness. 
and that he is the author of our salvation. And when you do that, you will love God even more. I know that you love God because you're here this morning, but I'm encouraging you to love God even more. Draw closer to him, and he will draw closer to you. I know this last two Sundays have been a lengthy readings, but Paul instructed the young preacher Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 13 to publicly read the scripture. And maybe sometimes we just need to, in our pulpits, just need to read through a chapter or read through a verse so that we can be drawn closer to God. To those who are steeped beneath heavy burdens, it is sweet rest. To the one who sits in gloom, it is glorious light. To him who has lost the way, it is a safe guide. To the discouraged, it whispers a message of hope. To the weary pilgrim, it is a good, strong star. To those who are disturbed by the storms of life, it is an anchor, sure and steadfast. To those who suffer in lonely solitude, it is a cool, soft hand resting on a fevered brow. To those who have been hurt by sin, it is a healing balm. God's word is that and much more. We talked about this particular passage last week and I want to emphasize it again this week. Psalm 100 verse 89 Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. And it needs to be settled in our hearts, in our minds, here on earth. When the word of God has failed people because they don't listen or they don't adhere to God's teachings, we know that the word of God will still stand. And again, as we looked at last week, God said it, I believe it, and in my heart, that settles it. That's where we get our strength. That's where our faith grows. And that's what I pray for you today and every day of your life that you will grow in the grace and knowledge of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. If there's anyone here this morning who needs to respond to our Lord's invitation, we hope that you will take advantage of this time that God has given you and do so while we stand and sing.